just tell us a little bit more about the struggle it must have been because you know you would have to also cook the food you have to figure out what the people are liking whether the pricing is right uh, when if a vendor gets it wrong what do you do like tell us a little bit more about the struggles so like i said um after finishing work at 10 o'clock at night i would go out and that was my way of marketing my product so okay. i would go into bars and just speak about burgers all night and uh, the funny thing is the next day all of the people i would speak to <laughs> about my burgers would land up So my uncle started Burger Factory back in 2012 in Goa when Goa was not so popular. How did that happen? Goa was pretty popular. Um not for Not for a person coming from New Zealand to like you know set up shop. Um so my my father had leased out a hotel in uh, in uh, in Kalangut in 2005 and uh, by the time it was 2010 the restaurant in this uh, hotel was empty so i came back from from um, new zealand after getting my residence to try my luck luck out but like i said it was a resort and people tend to not enter a resort to eat food they would rather go to a restaurant and the people living in the resort would also tend to go out and eat so nobody really came to this then of course we had to figure out a new model which was uh, completely different zero staff uh, one product um limited options and uh, yeah so it's basically simple minimalistic that's what you said burger yeah, yeah. but why did you think of burger it's my favorite food <laughs> and there was no good burger in goa at that point in time yesterday we it's had still a favorite of, food so i didn't interrupt it's still you haven't overdosed on it no no okay. i don't think i can overdose <laughs> in burgers especially on a holiday you tend to eat a lot of burgers um so goa being a holiday destination a lot of burgers are sold there and back in 2012 there was not one place which was only centered around burgers i mean yes there were restaurants serving burgers but there was not one place which only served burgers i mean i would say not just goa anywhere in india i would probably say that we are the first gourmet burger place in india in india yeah and 2nd of october 2012 okay. a burger factory was born so you missed a burger that you used to get in new zealand so you wanted to get that feeling back in goa but Did you know how to cook like flip that good a burger? So yeah, I was um so of course my parents loved to invite people over and I just knew that I had to be in the hospitality industry pretty early in life. Um so I wanted to go to New Zealand. Of course my parents a middle class background didn't have the money to send me to New Zealand to Cologne. Um landed up in New Zealand to do a hospitality management course, not a chef course, but management said. Okay. Um mom said that hey we only going to pay for tuition so if you want to <laughs> smoke cigarettes or whatever you have to work so i got a job in 7 days okay didn't know anybody in new zealand landed got a job um worked for 10 years in same uh, same um, small family run business called little india oh yeah indian restaurant okay um and did of you, course did you manage it in the end or yeah so i started as a dishwasher okay so my first job way. yeah and then of course a waiter and then after my graduation i was offered a management uh, role as a manager regional manager okay um so i used to handle few restaurants across new zealand these guys have got 16 restaurants small family run business so i've learned a lot um hands on from like of course from dishwashing to right up yeah um then i did my mba while working full time okay and then got my residence And then I decided to come back to India as soon as I got my residence I was like maybe this time to so figure when, it out in India. So, um the patty, the bun. How long did all of that take to come together? It's taken 10 years. I mean it's a trial and error. It's a game which you play every day, you know. Every day you try to make your product better. So that's what we've been uh, trying to do over the last 10 years. I would say it's 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 kind of the same burger but it's not. It's kind of changed. um over the last 10 years and from the idea to the actual execution and the first burger factory how long did that take um like i said i failed in my first uh, venture yeah, yeah in kalangut so tried to do everything uh, completely opposite so you saw burgers there no 
So it was um, not burgers, but everything else from butter chicken <laughs> to fried rice to chili chicken to. Um, yeah, right. I had interesting stuff like um, tandoori duck. Um, we had rabbit on the menu. So I was trying to do interesting stuff, not the typical stuff. So the sim- was the lesson also that don't focus on too much, go simple. Precisely. Basic. So the idea was to not have staff, not have a broad menu just limited um, um, options, I mean only burgers. Initially we thought we were going to do a cafe with a bunch of stuff. The other thing I wanted to ask you was, you did it all on your own. Um, so as you scaled up, you got people on board. How big are you now? Tell our viewers all of that. Um, it's, it's a small family business, not big. But from where we started, it's become bigger. Um, I still remember we opened and the first day we sold out. And the second day we sold out. And the third day we sold out. And I remember my mom was leaving for Poland. And that day we had sold 30 burgers. And I called her up. She was on her way to the airport. And um, I was like, Mom, we have sold 30 burgers today. And she was like full of joy. And she was like, oh my God, this can only get better from here. So now you're like you said, you know how many outlets and stuff. Only go? Don't go anywhere else? It's a going brand. I mean, um, it's hard to get out of Goa, but yes, we are, we are, we are thinking of scaling and going into other cities, mainly to tier two cities. Do you know which ones? We... We don't want to share it yet. Uh, no, we are, cent- cent- we are, we are we're thinking of Pune. Okay, you're thinking of Pune. Yeah. And you just started online delivery. What made you change your mind? Change. I mean, change <laughs> is the only constant. Yeah. Um, we took a while to embrace market. it. Yeah, we did. I mean, you know, um, Goa has evolved. People in Goa have evolved over the last 10 years. The business has evolved. The market has evolved. Of course, COVID hit. Um, deliveries became big. And of course, you've got to give um, your customers what they want. Yeah. Uh, a huge residential population has moved in from, of course, Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, all over India. And these people were used to deliveries. And, um, and you know... <laughs> It took a while for you to figure out that the burger will not taste the same, but the, the, the consumers want it. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is that people are already taking burgers from Goa to Delhi to Bombay and they're really raving about them. Um, so, I mean, it's, 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 of course, the quality drops a little bit, but I feel that uh, we've done a good job with the packaging and stuff. So it's going to be a good uh, burger, which reaches... Uh, so now there's, of course, been a big boom in the, you know, the food industry in Goa. So many brands have come up, not so many have died down. They are, you know, maybe those that have come down. How did you stay ahead of the competition? Um, we believe in quality. So from mm-hmm. the beginning, um, we have only been quality driven. <clears throat> in the, I mean, in the early days, we never used our bread the next day. Uh, fresh produce every day from the vegetables to the meat to everything is fresh every single day. We don't freeze anything. Um, once you are quality driven and you know you have passion with what you do, I guess uh, success comes with that. Okay, can I ask you outside of Burger Factory, which is the burger you like the most in Goa? Second favorite. Oof, uh, the ones I make at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, third favorite. Um, uh, there are a bunch of good burgers, and all are different. Mm. Um, but Baba Oram has got a good burger. And you, you know, you, you talked about how burgers weren't that big when you started out. But now you've seen some premium burger brands as well. Have you tried any in the other cities? What do you think of them? I have. I have uh, tried Akku's. I have tried Burgerama. I've tried a bunch of others. Um, they're all good. The, the good thing about burgers is that they're all very different. So, I mean, you can't say one is better than the other because they're different. I mean, uh, like a burger rama, you would, um, it's a midnight snack. As, but a burger factory burger is a meal. So you would go for either a lunch or a dinner. Whereas a burger rama burger, you would eat, you know, in the middle of the day or late at night. Or, but a burger factory burger, you cannot. It's a, it's a meal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a meal. Now, having said that as well, um, I want to focus a little more like on where things stand now. It looks amazing. The initial days, like you said, it was a one-man operation, right? Yeah. What was the toughest thing that you remember you had to do back then? Just waking up in the morning and doing the same thing over and over again is difficult. But then if you get good guests and nice people uh, visiting your outlet, it's great because then the day goes by really fast. Otherwise, it can get monotonous just 
rushing to the market every day and getting the same vegetables and doing the same thing. But it's the people who uh, come in, um, make the difference and make our job very easy. Someone in Goa once told me that you have to open another outlet because you didn't know what to do with all the people who stayed with you, the staff that stayed with you from day one. Yeah, so I'm, I was content with one. But then my staff had to grow. So we opened one more so they could grow. I mean, we have, we have uh, kitchen managers like they call themselves. The head of the kitchen is called a kitchen manager. So now we have a bunch of kitchen managers um, who've grown over the last 10 years with us. We um, started with, uh, I think it was somewhere in 2013, I hired my first staff who is now heading Burger Factory, really. Um, and after that, of course, slowly he got one and two and three, and now we've got a strength of 120 people. Why are the French fries in Burger Factory so different? Uh, they are not French fries. Uh, they are chips. Um, French fries, uh, I feel, I mean, our burgers are really big. That's the meal and not the chips. Mm. Chips are there for the texture. They are super crisp. They're thin hand-cut chips, which add texture to the burger and it's not about filling your stomach with potato. I mean, if there's enough <laughs> carbohydrate in the burger, we don't want more. And which is your favorite burger these days in, on the menu? We have um, recently introduced a jackfruit burger. Okay. Like, you know, um, jackfruit is very popular these days. Katar, Katar the, the TV show also. Um, yes, and a lot of um, meat eaters who have now turned to uh, being vegetarians love the texture of cattle because, of course, it's very fibrous and it's it's meaty. Um, so essentially, if you eat the jackfruit burger, you're not going to tell if it's chicken or or vegetarian. It's pretty good. And how conscious were you of that when you designed your menu over the years about having options for the vegetarians? Because the vegetarians also love Burger Factory, and usually, you know, there are not that many options when you go. Uh, when we opened in 2012, um, there were a lot of hippies who were, of course, uh, there was this vegan culture setting in then. So we've had a fair share of our vegans from the beginning. So we've had vegetarian burgers yeah. on the menu, yes. Which is which is, which is a best-selling burger? Um, Do they agree with your choices? Chicken, of course, uh, sells the most. 70-80% of our business is chicken. Um, so the chicken original, uh, mm. the chicken with onion and tomato mm -hmm. is the best seller. So do you think that Goa now has perhaps one of the most innovative and evolved uh, food industries out there in India? Uh, I would say yes, um, because uh, there are a lot of home chefs in Goa. Um, all the places from Thalassa to Baba Oram to um, Arjuna to all of these places, the owners are chefs. Um, and they invest a lot of their time in there um, all day, all year long. Um, and when you do that, and with passion, you tend to come out with a good product. Yeah. And none of them seem to have the appetite to want to be in places outside of Goa. I know you're going to Pune, but that's a trend that you see, continue to see. A, a burger factory, when we developed the whole model, we wanted to uh, make it into a scalable model. Um, uh, you franchise it? Uh, we haven't thought about franchising as yet. Mm -hmm. Small family business. So you did everything on your own? Yes. Initially, I did everything on my own. Yeah. Like, what does that mean, like everything? Everything is waking up in the morning at 5.30, going to uh, shop for vegetables, get the meat, um, all the other things, all the ingredients which one might require during the day, come back, do all the prep, of course, cleaning, sweeping, all of that jazz. Um, customers would arrive, take orders, make the orders, deliver the orders, get the bill, all of it. I mean, everything which happens in a restaurant, I did a lot. And what time would you shut at night? Uh, we opened at 10 a.m. and we shut at 10 p.m. So but like you were getting 12... up at 5.30 a.m.? Yeah, so it was a... and, and then after 10 o'clock, you can't really go home and sleep. Um, so one would go to a bar, okay. right, and then get back home at like whatever, 12, 1. So I hardly slept those days. How old were you? I was 27. You do all this at 27? Yeah. You know, 27 is not that young to be doing all this as well. I'd already done that in New Zealand, yeah. like I said. Um, started with the dishwasher, so it was not something which is new. Um, uh, the, you know, uh, the, the taboo in India about not picking up dirty plates and not sweeping the floor and all of that. That culture doesn't exist in burger factories because it started like that. So then, when, was, when did you hire your first employee? I think it was 2013. Um, so almost a year later? No. Yeah, okay. a year later. Yeah. First employee. And what first did, employee. And what did the first employee do that you didn't do? 
uh, when I mean I start to take it easy when here. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've done my sh uh, fair share of work. Um, so yeah, I mean I kind of chill down. I used to play a lot of chess with mm. customers. I mean it became a hangout. Burger Factory Anjuna became a hangout with all the backpackers. There was a backpacker boom uh, back in 2013-14. Um, young entrepreneurs came in. Um, you know, with hostels and restaurants and other businesses. It was, it was and young uh, between 25 and 30. So now I want to ask you one question, which is that you did this whole thing for a year where you were doing it all by yourself. Um, just tell us a little bit more about the struggle it must have been because, you know, you would have to also cook the food, you have to figure out what the people are liking, whether the pricing is right. Uh, when, if a vendor gets it wrong, what do you do? Like, tell us a little bit more about the struggles. So like I said, um, after finishing work at 10 o'clock at night, I would go out and that was my way of marketing my product. So okay. I would go into bars and just speak about burgers all night. And uh, the funny thing is the next day, all of the people I would speak to <laughs> about my burgers would land up. So the, the day went by like that. I mean, you met people you met the previous night and then yeah. you're in, you know, just having the same conversations and playing chess and... Um, so if you chose not to go out one night, would it impact sales the next day? Um, uh, I don't think that happened. I think I went out every night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Initial days, I was out every night. I mean, you know, you can't finish work. That's the worst thing about the restaurant industry is that you finish so late that you tend to miss out on the films, all the dinners, all, you know, uh, uh, friend, yeah. friend, give whatever, gatherings and all of that because you finish work at 12 o'clock at night. So all you can do is either go home and watch a movie, read a book or go out and get drunk. Um, I did that because I had to talk about my burgers initially. It's all pre-Instagram and boom as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pre -Instagram. social media. Yeah, like. yeah. There was of course Facebook. Facebook, Facebook was yeah. there, yeah. But no, no Instagram. So you might, did you have a Facebook profile at that time? Yes. So we were busy, do you have to do that yourself or did you hire no, we, someone? We have a Facebook, a Burger Factory Facebook page since 2012. That you would there have are some really cool pictures in there, so you must, I must uh, yeah, visit I must, the page. Yeah, 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 I must go like it and uh, check out the archives. Yeah. Um, I got this really cute space in Anjana in 2012. It was just one shop and that was our kitchen and we started with one table. So it was a four-seater um, with a hole in the wall and gradually in two months it became eight-seater. By the end of the, of the year it was a 16-seater. By 2013 it became a 50-seater and now I think we have about 500 seats in Goa. 500 seats? Yeah. Okay, now that you are on Zomato, finally, what is it for you, Zomato, Zomato? Zomato. Zomato. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming. Thank today. you so much for having me. Thanks so much. Cheers.